<laughs> Controversial TV host Tucker Carlson leaving Fox News. You go ahead and take this one. All right. Big screen. Because yeah, I had I had us little here, so let's <laughs> look at it, chat. Okay, so Fox, uh, Fox News Media and controversial host Tucker Carlson have agreed to part ways, the media company has said. The announcement comes less than a week after parent company Fox Corp agreed to pay $787.5 million to Dominion Voting Systems to uh, avert a defamation trial, which is pretty interesting. There have been no immediate explanation from Fox about why T Carlson is leaving. The network has said his last program was Friday, which is like sus, like sus to just be like, oh, he's just done. Yeah, we already had the last thing. Bye. Mm -hmm. um, Fox News Tonight will air live at 8 p.m. EST starting this evening as an interim I hate that word. Interim uh, show helmed by rotating Fox News personalities until a news host is named, the network added. We thank him for his service to the network as a host and prior to that as a contributor. And that's kind of a rude parting, uh, parting comment. You know, it's not, not filled with nearly as much love as CNN tried to uh, portray, which I think is kind of funny. But the stock price <laughs> of Fox Corp, the parent company of Fox News, Dropped sharply after Tucker or after uh, Carlson's departure from became public, dipping more than four percent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but there were like text messages and everything apparently that were coming out of this Dominion thing, uh, where Tucker Carlson was hating on uh, the the executives of Fox News, and they were saying things like, "Well, he never believed the uh, the." The conspiracy theory lie about you know the what was it the fraud narrative from the election things like that so i mean i'm gonna be honest the way this plays out this does sound like tucker carlson was fox's fox news's fall guy in this whole situation from this though like he's just like i don't believe this why am i saying these things okay well you're outing him because he was the voice and everybody was like, okay, well, they're saying defamatory things about Dominion. Dominion hits that lawsuit. And then all of a sudden you're like, all right, fine. We'll settle. Get him out. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's, man. And when I heard about that lawsuit going down, I was like, oh, like this is a serious one too, you know? Um, and I started to just kind of have that. I've had that thought for a while that like all of mainstream media is just, it's just the same. It's just repackaged. It's just repurposed. And uh, delivered straight to the people who, you know, they, they want to hear whatever side of the argument. Um, and I've always just kind of had a problem with that. Um, but yeah, no, I think, uh, I think they definitely used him as like a scapegoat. Like, Oh, it's just, it's his fault. Uh, look, we're going to fire him. Bye. Everything's fine. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I kind a of, a lot of money. I kind of feel like daily wire is the exact same thing as like mainstream media news, the way they, you know, they structure everything, the, the conversations they have, the, the ad reads that they constantly do. I mean, I feel like they're the same thing, just repurposed for the Internet, you know, mm -hmm. and it is it's like Daily Wire has thrown me off so much. I've, I've never really they say some things that just like a lot of things that are questionable, some things that they won't talk about. And, and when they do get hit with strikes and things like that somehow they always seem to bounce back like oh well we got this video struck down and in a week hey we got it back hmm, wonder how that happens uh i don't know i mean uh, it's one of those things it's like they've got they've probably got a lot more pull with with a company like youtube than most other people are gonna have you know like it's they're the they're sizable companies with a sizable presence online. Of course, they're going to have a bit more of a direct communication perhaps than even like some of the biggest YouTubers just because, you know, those are individuals versus a company. And right. I don't know. I think overall, like. But it is a little bit favorable when you're pumping a lot of money in an advertisement with these companies. Yeah. And the, I mean, that's but that's also a leverage point, too. It's like, hey. Like we pay you all of this money for advertising. You can't take down our content. You know what I mean? Like it's not like, I don't look at it necessarily as like, oh, look, they're, they're in bed with, with big tech and blah, blah, blah. Like you do have to work within the confines 
of the given platform that you're on. Like oh, yeah. I'm on I'm on TikTok. It's one of the most it's one of the most sensitive platforms that has ever existed when it comes to I, I don't know how I've survived. I'm just lucky or I just know how to meander my way through the word gymnastics to stay somewhat um good even though my account's been taken down like twice or three times or something like that and i got it back i don't know how but yeah um so i think it's just something like that like you have to work within the confines of the platform that you're on and you know i mean walsh went through it with the whole you know pronouns thing recently i think that's a bit much i think like requesting somebody respect the pronouns is um it's pretty frustrating and it's just like but like you <laughs> that's compelled speech though um which we'll kind of get into in the rumble segment anyway but yes but yeah it, it's just like I, I don't know just it rubs me the wrong way i guess i, I, get, mm -hmm. I get it you rely off the the revenue and everything from these these platforms but yet you know, it kind of it kind of reminds me of the Ethan Klein situation. You know, he's mm. one of those protected people, but so many people started complaining when he was saying to do things about the NRA and uh, about Ben <laughs> Shapiro making, making threats and <laughs> yeah, ben Shapiro stuff was it was so crazy. Like I just couldn't believe that you would say something like, "Bro, <laughs> read the room." <laughs> Right. But for him to come back after all that, you know, yes, he did take a little strike, but for him to be able to come back and, and still just be like, well, I said something wrong, but I stand by my statements. No, you should not be allowed to be, be able to do that, especially when you got other people who were kicked off and completely 100% banned. They can't mm -hmm. come back and make a new channel because it's against your terms of service and everything. But yet Ethan Klein can can call for mass on aliving and it's okay yeah. you know yeah it's just a point of hypocrisy sorry i was <clears throat> somebody was asking me um where yeah. the feed went because we, we like cut it for our my channel anyway um they're like what happened yeah the, the rumble thing's gonna start we're gonna wrap up tucker's little thing here in a second um uh, uh we got one two more things we need to talk about and then we'll we'll jump over to just the rumble segment yeah. Um, so kind of closing thoughts on this, though. I don't know. I'm interested to see what Tucker's going to do. I think he, I'm sure he's already got a, a, somewhat of a plan in place. And especially with his like little announcement that he made, everybody got super excited about that. And it was just really funny because he was like, he just like was just, just Tucker Carlson. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to do this for my basement now. <laughs> like, um, I just thought, I, I think, you know, it's funny because I think Carlson is actually like really endearing in just how, how, who he is, how, how he acts as a person. I, I, I don't know. I just like him. Um, and I actually, when I was, <clears throat> I wrote like a, when I was taking a class, it was kind of in the middle of like my political shift and I had a super, super lefty instructor. And so <laughs> I was taking like a journalism class online and I was like, they said to, to write um, an essay about who, like the greatest uh, hero of journalism or something along those lines. And I just like, I was like, I'm just going to pick Tucker Carlson and just see what happens, see if I get a good grade. And so I wrote a whole essay about Tucker Carlson and his background and I got an A on it. Like he could, he like didn't fail. I was like shocked. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Like, because I just like picked it just to be like, I wonder what's going to happen. Like it's kind of a test for that guy. Cause he was, right. he, he would, uh, he was very, very lefty. And I was like, uh, fact gorillas. Um, yeah, we remember you. And like we said, we're just doing this on the fly, brother. <laughs> we are learning and growing <laughs> uh, with our skills as we go along. So but I do want to mention something. Mm -hmm. Y'all take a look at this. This is the front page of rumble. Look what's under number three in news. Oh, that's pretty cool. But, uh, um, no, I am not a good YouTuber. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. I have a lot to learn, a lot of skills I need to I, learn. I am a horrible streamer. I'm not good at this. So this I, is why I, we do this, is to practice and get better and uh, get more comfortable. Yeah, I, I kind of bullied her into this. Like, I have the, <laughs> the, the streaming, like, experience from Twitch and gaming and things like that. But, yeah. All right. Um. But yeah, this is this is Tucker's little closing statements. The uh, the first time he ever 
he ever reached out after he was fired and i'm really hopeful to see what he's got now i'm pretty sure he does have to to wait till his contract time is done with for fox news uh, if i'm not mistaken that's like 17 18 months or something like this but what he says in this I, i've never really listened to like fox news and i don't really listen to a lot of like i don't religiously listen to tucker carlson i hear little skits here and there from it but you got my attention now sir y'all listen up good evening it's tucker carlson one of the first things you realize when you step outside the noise for a few days is how many genuinely nice people there are in this country kind and decent people people who really care about what's true and a bunch of hilarious people also a lot of those it's got to be the majority of the population even now so that's heartening. The other thing you notice when you take a little time off is how unbelievably stupid most of the debates you see on television. Yes. Are. They're completely irrelevant. They mean nothing. In five years, we won't even remember that we had them. Trust me, as someone who's participated. And yet at the same time, and this is the amazing thing, the undeniably big topics, the ones that will define our future, get virtually no discussion at all. War, civil liberties, emerging science, demographic change, corporate power, natural resources. When was the last time you heard a legitimate debate about any of those issues? It's been a long time. Debates like that are not permitted in American media. Both political parties and their donors have reached consensus on what benefits them, and they actively collude to shut down any conversation about it. Suddenly, the United States looks very much like a one-party state. That's a depressing realization, but it's not permanent. Our current orthodoxies won't last. They're brain dead. Nobody actually believes them. Hardly anyone's life is improved by them. This moment is too inherently ridiculous to continue, and so it won't. The people in charge know this. That's why they're hysterical and aggressive. They're afraid. They've given up persuasion. They're resorting to force. But it won't work. When honest people say what's true, calmly and without embarrassment, they become powerful. At the same time, the liars who've been trying to silence them shrink and they become weaker. That's the iron law of the universe. True things prevail. Where can you still find Americans saying true things? There aren't many places left, but there are some, and that's enough. As long as you can hear the words, there is hope. See you soon. See, isn't that just the most endearing freaking thing ever? Like, I just, I don't know. He just, he's just wholesome. <laughs> I just appreciate him. I think that whole little dig at the end is there are some places. I think he's going to rumble. Nobody else can afford him. Daily Wire cannot afford that man. Everybody's yeah. like, oh, he's going to go to, no, Daily Wire is not a good fit for him. I because mean, Daily I Wire censors whoever the same people that that are on there talking. No, I think he's going to rumble and I think he's going to do it himself. Well, yeah. Um, I, I don't, I don't understand like how rumble, like, like when people are signing up with rumble or signing mm. with rumble, I guess I'm kind of just confused on what that actually entails or what that means or what, what that contract looks like, because like, that's all I haven't heard any details. You know what I mean? I've just heard no. like, um, so I, I'm not really sure what that entails monetary wise, but anyway, yeah, I don't think he has any other option other than to just produce, like just start his own um, like channel, his own, his own show. And uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people who he knows and he has connections with that will help produce it and, you know, like make it a whole big thing. And so, yeah, I think um, because a lot of people were speculating, maybe he would move to Spotify like Joe Rogan did. So Oh, look at that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, see, see, I, I see a problem with that as well because Joe Rogan went over to Spotify and in his contract, Spotify could not censor him in any way, shape, or form. Like that was mm -hmm. part of the contract. And mm -hmm. then there was that whole thing where they were trying to, they were pushing for him to be removed from Spotify. And Spotify did take down a few of his episodes. So, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think that's going to happen either. Especially seeing as how you you have to understand this man knows more about the inner workings of our government than anybody else on TV. 
Do you think he would take that where Spotify is going to be like, okay, we'll we'll let you say whatever you want, and then people start screaming, especially like Chuck Schumer did to that Mulder, 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 whatever the the dude from uh, Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> yeah, that dude. I don't know why Mulder came up in my head. That's X Files, but yeah, it's like Chuck Schumer's just like. Shut him up. Don't let him talk about January 6th, our narrative. Break our narrative if he does it. And then all of a sudden, what happened to that? It ran yeah. for a day or two and then gone. So, yeah, he knows a lot more than he's leading on. And I don't think it, Spotify would be a great move for that, too. Uh, honestly, I think Rumble would be his best bet. And think about it. You Look know, how much Crowder brought over. You think how many people would come over to Rumble for Carlson? Well, it's not even just crowd. Like, look at like Russell Brand. Like, when yeah, Russell, Russell Brand, Brand brought like, some Russell, over too. Russell Brand was like, I think the first real big name to be like, I'm done with YouTube. You can find clips on there, but I'm running my entire show on Rumble. Like, right. hands down, I think he was the and he was the first one that really like everyone watched. Like, oh, okay, like people really will follow you. And like that's the thing too about having having a community where you have a, a, a loyal, I don't like to say fan base, a loyal audience, uh, because that way, you know, you know that you have support, you have backing. And it's, it's those people who sit and every single day are listening to what you're saying and every single day want to hear what you have to say. You know, like I, th there's a lot of power within that. There is, there definitely is, but I don't know. I, I think, I think he's going to strike out on his own, especially with the, his executive producer left as well. Not too long mm -hmm. after he did, I think he's striking out on his own, and I think he's going to he's going to really do something. And when he comes back, yeah. I'm going to pay attention, and I'm going to pay attention hard because I'm sure he's got shit to say. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. No, um, I'll be I'll be interested. I'm sure you know, and, but I'm sure he's had to sign an NDA from from Fox. I I can't imagine that they would uh they would not do that look how many people <laughs> went to rumble after the facts of... what <laughs> oh, you're so keep it up though silly. keep it up I i'm gonna tell you the truth though honestly with rumble the key is the lives like videos unless you're a big name pe person videos don't get a lot of plays over there it is the lives that bring the attention to you which is interesting because, like, I've had videos on Rumble get quite a bit of views, um, but I'm talking like le less than a thousand. You know, it's it's not like my YouTube whatsoever. Um, no, their algorithm. Uh, if there's like, I don't know how their algorithm. I don't know how any algorithm works. People think I know all of these things. I don't know any of that. I just just post a video and hope it does well. Just hope for the best. Just a wing. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, gorillas. We don't know what we're doing. But yeah, no, I'm going to let you in on a secret. <laughs> Nobody knows what they're doing. They're just doing the best that they can. That's, that's the secret to life that be like, people be like that person's got their, got everything together. In reality, the person that you're looking at probably has a million insecurities and self, you know, self doubt and all that stuff. And they just, they just put up a good front, like just put up a good front, you know, you'll, definitely. You'll <laughs> all right. 